Christianity is not by force. Honestly speaking, if you do not want to be a Christian, please do not be a Christian. Since you stopped going to church, it didn't stop the overflow. Since you stopped paying your tithes, nobody noticed. Since you stopped giving that your offering that cannot even run a Tuesday Bible study service, nobody noticed. The Bible says that the gospel is being spread on the wings of prosperity. What is prosperity? Money. People, people who give for the kingdom, billions of naira, they do not come out to make noise. They don't hear you. They, 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 they hear their voice. Now you, every single day you're on pastor's case. Every single day you're on church's case. If you do not want to come to church, sit at home. If you do not want to give, stay. Since so you stopped giving, nothing has changed. The gospel, it they go. Enough of this bashing of pastors and Christians. If you think ministry is easy, go and open your own church. Run it for one week, let us see. A man actually reaps from where he sows. If a pastor is a blessing to you and you feel you want to bless him financially, then go ahead and do it. They are not asking you for your money. It is not by force to pay tithes. It is not by force to... It is not by force. It, it, it's even crazy... That we wake up every day in this economy praying to God for a miracle. And yet when we see a miracle, we can't even believe one. I have never seen anywhere in the scripture where it's actually transcribed that there are some type of miracles that should be. And then there are some type of miracles that shouldn't be. As far as I'm concerned, the kind of miracle that Jesus did during his time are miracles that was unbelievable. Enough of bashing of men of God. If you have a true spirit... If you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you will know a true man of God when you see one. Instead of you investing your time in criticizing men of God, invest your time in knowing God and knowing God for yourself. And then, and only then, will you understand the scripture that says, I will give you men of God after my own heart who will teach you knowledge and wisdom. Enough of that your mouth bashing men of God is so easy for you to do. Shut it. If you don't sit down for your house, nobody they beg you. Why do you think the church is being attacked today? The church is being attacked today because it is God's interest. Anytime a pastor does something, you hear somebody come out. The problem of the Nigerian people is religion. You see one blogger will come out with his head like improper fraction. The problem of the church is religion. When it's traditional worship, which is a, a religion in Nigeria. You don't talk. Your anger is not with religion. Your anger is with Christians. You don't like pastors. The problem with Nigeria is not religion. You say, oh, look at China. Are they praying? China has over 200 gods. They don't post it on social media. Singapore, as serene as Singapore is, Singapore has nine gods. Your problem is with Christianity. There's development in China. Because they don't post such things online. Your problem is that you hate Christians. You don't like Christians. That's your problem. And those doing this are those who are once in the church. You say, I've left the church. I'm no more going to the church. If you have left the church, why not leave church matters alone? You used to like the church. Now you hate the church. You don't understand the opposite of love. The opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. When you once loved and you have now changed, you should not be interested in what concerns the church. You are calling men of God fake and you are using a fake account to call pastors fake. Instead of calling the fake pastors your colleagues. How can you use fake Instagram account to call a man of God fake? Are you okay? The problem of Nigeria is bad leadership and lawlessness. The person that will change Nigeria, his first agenda will be law and order. We are lawless in this country. Very lawless. Even those who are talk, looking for good governance are lawless. Those people in the different states are stealing with the pen. You, you are causing damage with your phone. This tribal wall, who is posting it? Is it government? Yoruba is fighting Igbos. Is it government? You are lawless. If there is law, the first agenda of a leader that will change Nigeria is law and order. Somebody comes out and he attacks someone. He destroys marriage by posting things on social media. And when it's time to get the person to face the court, you say justice for so and so. Or you tell the person, come and apologize so we can do damage control. The best form of damage control is to damage the damager. The problem now in media is about propaganda and narrative. Propaganda. Let's demonize this thing. Let's go after this person. Recently, you, this is somebody who came and painted her face and laid and said, Suleiman, want to kill me. Scam! And people fell for that. You are laughing because you know me. But people fell for that. So you must get to understand this thing, that the problem of Nigeria is not religion. Qatar is developed. When Qatar, the other time it was Ramadan, they didn't give anybody in the hotel food. They said everybody must fast. What's more religious than that? They made fasting compulsory for even Christians in the land. 
You check into a hotel, they don't feed you. You go to Dubai during Ramadan, they don't feed you. But they are developed because there is law and order. You will keep shouting. You keep doing, hey, our leader, you, you are worse. Every nation gets the leaders they deserve. I've left the church. I'm no more a Christian. I don't go to church anymore. Okay, now you have left the church. Why can't you rest? Is church the only thing you have left? Didn't you leave school? Are you a graduate? Didn't you leave business? You want us to open your chapter? If we start this Genesis, we'll see Revelation. No? Even your former compound, your six months rent is still there. You ran. Rebellion is in your bloodline. Listen, we see life from the color of our minds. What you choose to see is what you will see. If you want to see evil in the church, you will see abundance of it. But if you want to see good, you will be so shocked that so many good things are happening in the church. I know there are many faith pastors. It's true. I'm not denying it. But there are many genuine men of God. So stop this, this nonsense. This anger you have at the church. Hey, please, oh, your blood pressure is my concern. Oh. Because the more you are hating the church, the more the church is rising. What your opinion is irrelevantly, infinitesimally, consequentially material. So change your mind. The church is not your problem. Face your leaders. God bless you, Prophet Elijah Bamidele. Look, Allah is my name. Quickly, I, I am here because I've been thinking for the past few days. I, I have not been able to sleep well. I've been thinking a lot of things have been going on my mind. So I said, no, I will not be the only one to, to be thinking about these things. I need to bring it to you so that you can help me interpret or maybe give me answer to this question I've been asking myself. Why is it that when you are struggling, when you are begging, when you cannot feed, you cannot pay your children's school fees, you cannot pay your house rent, nobody asks you, why are you suffering? Nobody cares to know if you are living, if you are alive or not. Why is it like that? Like the way I am suffering now. I'm going through pain. Nobody cares to know what I'm going through. The same thing is happening to you that is watching this video. You are going through so many challenges now. Nobody cares to know what you are going through. But immediately God blesses you now. Immediately God picks your call now. Automatically you become a fake person. You become an occultic person. You become a ritualist. You become a Yahoo person. You become all manner of things. Why is it always like that? I don't know. I want you to please tell me. I beg you. This video will long a while, but I want you to just take your time and watch it. The reason why I'm saying this is because I spent close to two weeks in Mercy City, in Prophet Jeremiah's church. I've knew him since 2013. This is the first time we are having a good time together. This is the first time we are staying together. This is the first time we are eating together. We are doing things together since 2013. I told you before that my mission is to defend fathers and defend the body of Christ. Since 2013, this is the first time I'm having a, a good time to, with him. We enter the same car, we enter the same uh, speedboat, we do things together. This is the first time. And my eyes saw a lot of things. Do you know that this man so far so much in the street of worry? There was a time in the life of Prophet Jeremiah. I'm going to post some of the pictures here. You will see the pictures. His former pictures and his recent picture. When this man could not afford to pay his house rent, there was a time where he could not afford to pay his daughter's school fees. There was a time where he could not afford to even feed his wife. Do you also know that senior prophet Jeremiah's first wife left him because he was poor? Because he could not feed the family? The wife left him. Before this one that is with him now came, this woman suffered with him, oh! Suffered with him! These people went through hell. Today, God has speak his call. Prophet Jeremiah has become an occultic man. Prophet Jeremiah has become a satanist. Prophet Jeremiah has become a charlatan. Prophet Jeremiah has become a prophet of doom. Prophet Jeremiah has become a 419. But when this man was going through pain in the streets, nobody asked him, nobody called him to say, why are you suffering? Listen, the same cup you used to measure for your brother, they will use a measure for you. That nobody is talking about you now because you are still struggling. By the time you start tomorrow, they will start talking about you. Dr. Ebed Damina, who is supposed to be a grandfather, you are busy granting interviews from different media houses just because you want to run down your fellow men of God. You want to run down pastors who are supposed to be your children, your sons. Are you not ashamed, sir? I actually said I was not going to do this again. Because I spoke with my, with my father, 
and I said I was not going to do it again. But when I started seeing these videos and begin to imagine, say, what kind of a mentality is this man carrying? Sir, if you have failed this ministry, stay. Stay. You abuse Prophet Jeremiah. Money to night. You abuse Jerese, who is old enough to be your grandchild. Let me tell you, no matter how you, you speak against the church, can you see the way God is carrying the church? Go to Imo State and see what Evangelist Ebuka Obi is doing there. Ebuka Obi shut down the whole of Imo State. Jerese shut down the whole of the UK. Prophet Jeremiah shut down the whole of Delta State. Upon how not drag a rich, people came in their hundreds of thousands all over the world to witness the power of the God of Prophet Jeremiah. I saw with my eyes. I did not watch it on television. Thousands of sick people. These are not just a just, person uh, uh, who can No, I'm telling you, you see, saw, life saw, my God, water gushing out of people's body. He will pray for them. Instant healing and still give them money. There's no the second day of that program that must spend close to 15 million in empowering sick people. After praying for you, he will give you money. He will one million, five hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. He will just just I fold my hands and say, God, please give me this grace. Oh Lord, please give me this grace. Exactly the same way Prophet T. B. Joshua was doing it is what I saw in this man. You know. When you did not see with your eyes, you would think maybe they, they, they formulated it. Over 3,000 sick persons were lined up. This man touched all of them from the beginning to the end. Over 3,000 persons. Dr. Ebed Amina, can you lay hand on 500 persons and not get tired? This man lay hand, he prayed for over 3,000 sick persons. And still gave them money. All of them. I was following him. I was just following him back to back. I was following him. the security. Everybody was with me, just me and him. I was following him. Everybody was was watch my CTV. You you see it. Why was I doing that? I wanted to see with my two eyes so that I would know what to tell my people when I return back to Lagos. I saw something and I cried. Oh God, help me. The same way you help Prophet Jeremiah. Stop abusing people that you do not know their story. For every glory has a story. Every glory has a story. If a man of God did not take tithe and offering and seed, what do you want to take? Now your shit you want to take. If you think that the ministry, men of God are running and not running into a day, you open your running for one week. They come and tell us. We will see it. No matter how you're trying to break down the work of God, you cannot close the church, sir. You can't. You can't. You, 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 you are busy now eh, attending different media houses. Are you that jobless, Dr. Ebed Amina? Father Ebed Amina, are you that jobless that even small, a small child can just call you for interview, you go and sit down, and you're blah, 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 blah. You be running your mouth. You that is supposed to be praying for your sons all over the world, praying for the younger generation, now you they criticize members. May God forgive you. I know a lot of you have abused me, you have insulted the hell out of me, nothing you have not said about me. But do I really care? No. You that is watching this video, I want you to watch it. I want you to go and study it very well. Ask me this question on the comment section. Why is he always like that? You will both fought Prophet T.B. Joshua. Now you are fighting Prophet Jeremiah. A man that the wife left because of poverty. God asked him now. He knows he not supposed to get money. Prophet Jeremiah not supposed to get money. Prophet Jeremiah not, 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 not supposed to get fame. Immediately you, you become a female person, you become automatically become a fake person. May God help you. May God help me. You that will watch this video with a spiritual understanding, may God bless you. You that will still come and abuse me the way you have been abusing me. A lot of you said you are disappointed on me. You thought uh, I am different from there. You are disappointed. No challenge. No wahala. May God bless you. May God bless every one of you. Please drop your opinion on the comment section. Let me hear. Let me hear what you have to say. God bless you and shine his light upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, many years ago, there was a preacher in this country. He was very powerful, a young man. He used to come and buy my tape and preach my messages. Very powerful young man. He had a lot of following. And he used to attack the then government a lot. And I tried to talk to him because when I used to do that thing and I got into trouble, 
Nobody stood with me. And the Lord said, I did not mandate you and call you to do what you did. You were foolish about what you did. What was going on was wrong. But the way you went about it was also wrong. My pulpit is not to insult people in authority. You didn't handle it well. So I learned. For whatever reason, sometimes when some of these young guys come into wealth and money and influence, they, they, won't listen to, they won't listen to elders. They feel like they know everything. So I couldn't reach him. Next thing I heard, he was involved in a bad accident and he died. And the guy called me and said, I told you. And I knew exactly what happened, but I couldn't say anything. Because he wasn't wise. There's a way to go about things. The word of the Lord is clear about protocols and patterns in Old Testament and New Testament dispensation. And you got to go. You see, God is not under obligation to protect you when you cross a certain line. I'm telling you. As long as you are within the boundaries. You know, many years ago, there was a guy in this country, very powerful. Very powerful. And he had a girlfriend who got born again and was coming to this church. And... He invited the girl to come and the girl wouldn't go. Then she, she acted very foolishly. She said to the guy that, you know, they used to call me Brother Nick at that time. I wasn't yet ordained to those ranks that I'm in today. I was, you know, I didn't declare myself to be anything. It was conferred on me by elders and those above me. But let me move on this way. So he told the guy, he said, Brother Nick said, I can't have an affair with you. I can't have anything to do with you. I never said that. I just told her what the Bible said. And instead of her to say the Bible said, so the guy will go and fight God, he said, Brother Nick said. So the guy sent me a message and said, You, I will show you where power lies. And he did so many things to trouble me. A lot of things. And one day, I felt the inspiration of God. And I prayed a prayer. And I said, Lord, this man, why should he live? What is his value, usefulness to you, to your agenda, and to humanity? Why should he enjoy all this power to afflict the innocent? Why should he live? What is his usefulness and value to your agenda for humanity and this country? I was going to London. He was in a plane with me. When I was coming back, he was in a casket. I didn't ask God to kill him. I didn't pray that prayer. I didn't say kill him. I just said, what is his usefulness? I pleaded my case. Yeah. Psalm 40, Isaiah 43. I think verse 25. He said, come and let's plead together. Plead. I had to plead my case before the throne. Then, one of our brothers, Kofi, I was in my office. He came to see me and he said, there is this political appointed guy in my office. He has set his eyes on me. He wants my office. He wants my job. And the guy had the audacity to tell him, I'm taking your office from you. So he came to see me. And I took anointing oil and I prayed over him. And I said, because he threatened you, because he threatened you and your offices and your position, let another take his place. I went to America. I was there very early in the morning and my phone rang and it was him. I said, Kofi, what is this? What's going on? He said, Papa, you won't believe this. I said, what happened? He said, you see the guy that was threatening me? I was in my office with some friends and we heard a shout and we ran to find out what was going on. When they got to his office, he was on the floor. By the time they rushed him to the hospital, he was dead. I don't pray for people to die. I just pray simple prayers. And God decides to answer the prayers. If he answers it, then it was a good one. If he doesn't, then it was a bad one. But at least I'll pray. But what I'm saying here is, watch this. People should be very careful in this life. Especially when you have power or money or influence or position. Be careful how you treat others. I'm telling you. Because it's not everybody you touch and you go free. I'm telling you. You touch some people and go free. And others you touch them. 
and the things that will happen to you and your family, you will regret touching them. So be careful. I know you are very powerful. But if you have forgotten, study history. Check. Read it. And look at the pharaohs of Egypt. And the empires of Rome. And look at Europe. Men who were so powerful and they were feared. And they destroyed lives with impunity. Like the Hitlers, Hitler of Germany. Look at the Saddams and the Gaddafis. Hear me. Men have lived and passed. Alexander the Great, the Napoleons. People have come and they've gone. You will come, you have come and you also go. But whether history will remember you for good or evil and how you will be defined by history has everything to do with how you are handling people today with the position, money and influence you have. Be careful. In this video, we have great men of God like the Apostle Johnson Suleiman and Archbishop Duncan Williams coming out to speak against people who criticize the church or men of God. And this is a message that a lot of people have to listen to because nowadays we have people who are constantly criticizing or speaking against the church or men of God. And these people are not even people who are Christians coming to church consistently. Now, one thing that we should never mistake is the fact that the Bible tells us that we shouldn't speak against the anointed ones of God, especially people who hold the office that God has provided for us. And in this video, at the beginning, we have this great woman who came out and then spoke about the issue. A lot of people who every time they've made a business out of it, you know, trying to always speak against the church and pastors and the activities of the church. Meanwhile, these people are not even living the life that they are supposed to live. Nobody made anyone a judge over another person. God is the ultimate judge. And when you read the Bible, Jesus Christ says something powerful in the scriptures. He said that I will build my church. He said, I would build my church. So that means that Jesus Christ is the one going to build a church. He didn't say that let's build the church or let's build the church together. He, he doesn't need anyone's permission to build his church. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. And he said, I will build it. So when you see something going wrong in Christianity, or maybe you see a man of God doing something that you think that is not right, you are not the one to judge. Because at the end of the day, Jesus Christ is the one who says that he's going to build a church. Don't be a helper of God. God doesn't need your help. God doesn't need you <laughs> in order to run things in the church. He sees everything that's going on in the church. Don't assume that God doesn't see this man of God. If you have seen a man of God and you think that the man of God is fake, don't think that Jesus Christ has not seen him. Jesus Christ has seen him. Leave the person to Jesus. Just leave the person to Jesus. You are not the one to judge. Jesus Christ is the one who is going to build his own church. So leave the person for Jesus Christ to handle. Because at the end of the day, you are not the one who called the person into ministry. It's Christ who did. Jesus Christ is the one who made a person his servant. So when you see something that is going on and then you might not like it, just leave it. Let Christ be the judge. Because you cannot judge someone's servant. The person was called into ministry by Jesus Christ. You are not the one who called him or her. So if you are not the, the, the boss of the person and the person happens to be a servant of Jesus Christ, how then are you going to judge the person? Let his master judge him. So that will be all for today's video. Let me know what you think about this. Kindly like the video, share your thoughts in the comment section and don't also forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.